So with everything going on with the coronavirus and school closures, people getting laid off of their jobs, surgeries being canceled, I wanted to make a video about how everything is impacting and will impact medical schools, medical students, residents, as well as even fellows. What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week, you don't wanna miss them. So, widespread pandemic of this uh, virus has caused a lot of disruptions in our medical education as physicians and medical students. And I wanted to just give my thoughts on it and some ways that you know this virus will impact students that are in their training now. So starting off with medical students, for those who don't know, during the first two years of medical school, you spend that in the classroom. In the classroom, there could be 200 people there. In my first year medical school classroom at Georgetown, there were about 400 or 500 people just because we had some people that were either doing post -backs or getting their master's degree and they took the classes with us. So in this large auditorium, and I have another video that kind of describes the classroom setting and I walk around the classroom and I show you guys where I sit and I'll put that right up here. But in this large auditorium, we have all these medical students that are in the room and then there's a professor that teaches us, kind of similar to college or you know some big high schools. Well, now classes are canceled and uh, people can't go to school. You have to socially distance yourself from other people about six feet or so. So this really affects medical students, mostly in their clerkships because a lot of the times medical schools allow students to study from home. And that's one thing that I did in medical school. I really didn't go to class and really never went unless it was mandatory, like a small group session or you know a meeting that I had to go to. Otherwise I stayed home and studied. And that's essentially where the medical students now, the first year and second year medical students are doing. They're staying at home and hopefully they're studying. Well, in the third and fourth year of medical school, that's when you do your clinical clerkships. You rotate in the hospital, surgery, emergency medicine, nephrology, you know, GI, all the different subspecialties. And this is where you learn the bulk of your training about how to become a doctor. I don't feel like I've learned, you know, the bulk of what I actually need to know how to manage patients in the ICU, patients on ventilators, patients, you know, in surgery, how to suture, how to put in a chest tube on general surgery, you know, all these different things that, you know, you learn in the books, you know, in, in the classroom, but you really don't, you know, grasp it until you actually see it and, you, and, and you're like, wow, that's, I remember reading about that and now it's gonna stick. So my third and fourth year of medical school were really instrumental in my kind of process of becoming a doctor in terms of the knowledge that I gained during those times. Well, now since you know the hospitals are cutting back on various surgeries and you know they're not allowing students to rotate in their clinical clerkships, how will this impact, you know, that knowledge base? Uh, these the things that you need to learn how to do and what to do as a doctor. Well, I think medical students are really going to take an impact, a big hit because of this, and it's going to impact their training in a really huge way. Well, now that all clinical rotations are on hold, the question is how will medical schools and residency programs kind of respond to this? The Liaison Committee on Medical Education, or LCME, they recently announced that most medical schools, uh, they have several weeks of elective time in your fourth year or any other phase of the curriculum which can make up these uh, missed weeks. Um, that's one suggestion. I think uh, there is a lot of free time in fourth year medical school where you just taking an elective. I, I took like radiology. I took another elective where I went to Liberia, West Africa for a month and most of the core of what you need to no to become a doctor comes in your third year and also the kind of textbook aspect of that in your second year of medical school. So there's even, b before this even started, there are some suggestions and recommendations online of whether medical school should be three years long. And 
you know, get rid of the fourth year. So I'm curious to see what's going to happen as a result of this and whether medical schools will actually change medical school from four years to three years or let some students graduate early. And that's some medical schools in Massachusetts as well as New York. Recently, they let their medical students graduate early, like hundreds of them, so they can be on the front lines and help out if needed. So what about residency? So especially as a surgical resident, there are a minimum number of surgeries that you have to do. For orthopedics, I had to do like 50 knee replacements, 40 or so hip replacements. I had to do 20 carpal tunnel release surgeries. So you have a minimum number of surgical cases that you must complete before you can graduate or you're eligible to graduate. Now that a lot of the hospitals, they're canceling their elective cases, a lot of the knee replacements, hip replacements, carpal tunnel releases, a lot of the cases that are, you know, you need those numbers to graduate, well, this will, you know, really impact residents as well. Will they be able to meet their, their numbers, their required minimums? Only time will tell how long this crisis will last and how long residents as well as medical students will be affected. The good thing is that most residency programs are five years long or four years long. So by the time that you are third year or even kind of close to your fourth year, you should have majority of your minimum number of surgeries to graduate. So will it affect residents? I'm speaking more from a surgical standpoint of it. I don't think so just because of the number of years that you know you have to complete these numbers. But you know, a lot of hospitals, a lot of residents, a lot of training programs are taking a big hit from this as well. So another aspect of our training that's been affected is the away rotations. For those who don't know what an away rotation is, this is a rotation, usually a month long, that you complete during your fourth year of medical school. So as fourth year medical students, you choose your specialty. Say for instance, you wanna go into internal medicine. Well, to do a way rotation, that implies that you apply through a different application system. It's called VSAS, Visiting Students Application System. This is separate from your residency application. And you apply to these different programs. Essentially, it's to go to different programs to check it out and see if you like it. And to it's a month-long interview. Well, for the surgical subspecialties and the more competitive specialties, this is a chance to get to know the program and the program to get to know you. This is, I personally believe, one of the best ways to strengthen your application or to get into a program or to match into a program, even if you have kind of lower scores. Most programs would rather take someone who is a hard worker, who's a team player, who gets along with everyone else, and that person has a lower kind of board score versus someone who has like a 270 or 280 and you know doesn't have all those attributes. The AAMC is recommending that students who are interested in doing away rotations that they find local programs to allow them to rotate there. Well, this is really not, you know, that helpful just because if I go to medical school in Missouri and I want to end up back in Texas, well, a way to get back to Texas is to rotate at those programs. And if you are away in Missouri, you know, there may be not another medical school or another program where you can locally that you can rotate at and, you know, that may put you at a disadvantage. So the away rotations are a, an extremely important part of the application when it comes to applying and matching into these competitive specialties. Well, now everyone is socially distancing themselves and no one can really travel. There are a lot of the residency programs and medical schools and various programs out there, they're not allowing students to rotate at their schools. I think this is a huge kind of loss, especially for the fourth year medical students who usually around the month of June or July, they start those rotations and most people would do three to four rotations. I rotated at Baylor in Houston, UT San Antonio, Northwestern in Chicago, and I did a month long 
orthopedic surgery rotation at my med school at Georgetown. Depending on how long this pandemic lasts will determine whether these students who are going into these competitive specialties, whether they will be impacted, you know, a little or at all. So, you know, if this kind of goes on until July or August or September, well, those fourth year medical students that are applying to these competitive specialties may be at a disadvantage. Uh, you know, they can't showcase their skills or they can't showcase everyone that they are a hard worker or they really want to go to a program because this is a way to let the program know that I'm here in Chicago and I'm from Texas and I really want to go to your program. I spent all this money, which they don't really reimburse you for. It's your personal money that you spend. And each away rotation, you may spend two to three thousand dollars on housing, on food, on shelter, on clothes, kind of traveling to different areas. So uh, you're paying for all this stuff by yourself. So rotating in a program really lets that program know that you're interested in that program and they really appreciate it. And most programs will give you an interview offer at the completion of that month. If you know you do well in that rotation, some automatically do it and some kind of use some criteria. So it's a great way to match into a really good specialty and for programs to get to know you. But now, who knows what's gonna happen with the away rotations. So another part of our training that has been affected are the exams, whether that's the MCAT, step one, step two, your board exams. I've heard a lot of stories are of people that are sitting for their oral exams as board certified you know, doctors that they're being canceled as well. So a lot of the you know, committees for these exams have come out and say they're waiving all the fees for the MCAT if you have to reschedule because of this. Step one, they're waiving fees for this as well. And you know, step two is an exam that is two parts. There's a clinical skills and a clinical knowledge. Well, the clinical knowledge is you know, being canceled for a lot of students. And the clinical skills is where we travel to a couple different locations. There's one in Houston, there's one in Chicago, I believe, and a couple other places. And this is where you are graded and tested on your physical exam skills or your diagnostic skills. So there are paid actors that come and they portray certain different illnesses and diagnoses and you have to figure out what's wrong with them. Usually what happens, you knock on the door, you have to wash your hands, you wear your white coat, introduce yourself to the fake patient or the actor and they may say, hey, I have some chest pain, um, you know, this has been going on for this many days. You have to ask them more questions. You have to do the necessary workup for this patient, whether get an x-ray or EKG or just give them some protonics for, you know, acid reflux if you think that's what it is. Well, these clinical skills testing sites are being closed as well. So, um, you know, students just have to figure out another date when this is all settles down of when and where they can go to um, satisfy this requirement for graduation. So in fellowship, how is this affecting my education, my training and fellowship? So all of our elective cases have been canceled. Majority of our clinics have been canceled. This is where we see patients in office. We see them before surgery and after surgery to check on their progress. And basically a lot of things have been, you know, at halt. You know, what we are doing, we're doing telemedicine visits which means we're getting in front of the camera and getting in front of the video to video chat with our patients to check on them and see how they're doing. You know, they can turn around and we can look at their wounds. We can give recommendations in terms of what to do at home to manage their pain. We can prescribe medications over the phone or call it to the pharmacy. So there's lots of different kind of ways that, um, you know, you can manage a patient with telemedicine. And it has its limitations and we're not able to do like a full exam, but you can have the patient move up their foot or their ankle to see if their nerves are working. But, you know, you're limited in kind of what you can do. Another good part of my fellowship is that uh, we have a trauma rotation and, you know, just because the coronavirus is pretty rampant and, you know, it's a pandemic, people still get into accidents, they have falls, you know, they have disc herniations that cause their bowel and bladder to not function. And these are the kind of the surgical emergencies or urgent type cases that we're still doing. So on our trauma rotation, we're still able to fix a patient's neck when they come in for a broken neck or fix a patient's lower back if they break their back in a car accident or fall 
or get shot. So, um, you know, that's the good thing about our program is that we have the ability to do trauma. And those are most of the cases that we're still doing. The cases where patients have progressive neurologic deficit, if they have weakness in their leg or foot or a condition called cauda equina, which means the end portion of the spinal cord is being compressed by a large tumor or a disc herniation is causing them to not be able to use the bathroom. Well, these are cases that we're still doing. Luckily, you know, we do a lot of cases here and um, hopefully we'll be able to get back into the operating room soon, but uh, who knows how long this will last. In the meantime, a lot of our fellows are doing research, we're studying, we're, we're, we're still having lectures, which uh, the lectures are kind of audio-based or video-based uh, lectures from our staff. Uh, so we're, we're still staying busy, but uh, not operating as much. So whether you're a medical student, pre-med, fellow, resident, uh, these are some tips for you guys to help you, you know, stay productive during this time. The first thing is to read. This is an opportunity that you may not experience at any point in your life, how much time you'll have off. Just the sheer amount of time that you can sit and read for multiple hours on end with, without a lot of other distractions. So I would take advantage of this opportunity to read. If you have an upcoming rotation or upcoming elective or upcoming surgery in the next few months, just make sure you spend the time to put your head in the books and read. If you are a pre-med student applying to medical school or a medical student applying to residency or a resident applying to fellowship, you could spend this time emailing your letter writers to get your letters of recommendation. This is a good opportunity to do that just because most people are at home, they're on their laptops, and they may have time to spend those extra hours writing that letter of recommendation. Same thing goes for personal statements. This is a great time to you know, draft your personal statement. You don't have to write it from start to finish. You can just write some outlines or some, you know, thoughts that come to your head and put it in a eventual order at the end, but spend this time being productive. Even if you are two years out from applying to medical school or, or a year out from applying to residency, spend this time, write your personal statement, or at least start it. So this is how the coronavirus is affecting medical education kind of worldwide from pre-med students to medical students to residents, it's affecting everyone. Make sure you guys use this time wisely, be productive, and most importantly, stay safe. Thank you for watching this video, make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week, we'll see you next time.